Welcome to my workshop. You are watching Casual DIY Channel. Now, if you do have a Japanese saw like this one or thinking of buying one, that's going to be your best purchase ever. Japanese type saws are absolutely fantastic bit of kit in any workshop. However, the way they are designed sometimes is actually quite hard to keep a straight line whilst cutting. And today's jig will help us with that task. It will be a magnetic jig to guide the saw at all times. So we're going to have nice uh, cross cuts at 90 degrees and 45 degrees as well. Hopefully this simple solution will help you out to achieve those perfect cuts. So let's get started. So what do we actually need for today's project? Well, first of all, magnets, okay? I've got some small magnets, six of them, and I think that will be plenty. I'm gonna have three for each side, i.e. on the 90 degrees and the 45. Next, we're gonna need a nice chunky piece of wood. Now, I do suggest using a hardwood, in my case is oak, the uh, faces, the ends, and one side of uh, this block, everything's nice and square, and that's what you need for this project. We need to make sure that all the pieces are 100% straight and square. So I've got only one edge left to sort out, but I'm gonna cut that to the right size. I'm also gonna be using a piece that will be a guide for our jig. And in this case, I'm using white ash as more or less I had the uh, piece lying about in my workshop. However, this one is not <laughs> nice and square. So I need to get it sorted on my jointer. However, if you don't have those tools, don't worry. Hand plane will do just fine and will make sure that uh, all the faces and all the edges are nice and square. And we're also going to need a base for our jig. I'm still debating in my mind what to use. I've got this melamine board that's 18 millimeters in thickness. And I've got this laminated plywood sheet that's 16 millimeters in thickness and I'm more leaning towards this however uh, we'll see how it goes. Now one side will be for 45 degrees as I mentioned so I'm just setting my miter saw to 45. Okay, now in the block we need to pre-drill some holes to allow the magnets to get into. Now as you can see, I'm actually using the offcut I had. Uh, I just used some uh, silver tape just to put it in place for now. And now with my pillar drill, I'm just gonna pre-drill um, the holes. First of all in the straight edge and then in the 45 angle. And again, for the 45, I'm just using the offcut <laughs> as before, just to have that nice stable base so I can pre-drill the hole um, straight into the 45 degree angle. Right, let's install the magnets. I'm gonna be using some CA glue with an activator. That will be plenty strong, in my opinion. However, if you feel that may not work for you, you can then use five minute epoxy. That should do the trick just fine. Just make sure that the magnets are actually not sticking over the level of the wood. They need to be slightly below the surface. Now I've actually decided to cut another piece, another lip, and I'll show you why in just a few moments. But now we need to attach both of them to our main block. Now this is crucial, <laughs> it really needs to be straight and square. So use a square, make sure everything's absolutely spot on. And for that initial quick grab, I'm just gonna be using a bit of CA and obviously some wood glue as well. Now, if you're using clamps, don't add too much 
pressure you don't want those pieces to bow on you and again make sure everything is nice and square with the glue set I'm just gonna reinforce these with some screws two on each side Right, in the end I've decided to use this 12mm plywood sheet and um, that's 32cm wide, 20cm deep and I do want to have the ability to actually mount this um, guide block onto this so it stays in one place and doesn't move left to right so you do have full control over it. And with that lip created over here you can clamp it to your workbench or actually use it in a vise. Now I do want to have this detachable from the base so I can use it on larger pieces of timber. So the way I'm going to have both of the pieces connected I'm just going to be using a T-bolt like this one and a star knob. Okay so we're going to pre-drill one hole here more or less in the middle of the block and at the same time I'm going to pre-drill the block and the base so both of my holes align in a perfect place. Now I'm using a T-bolt but any bolt will do, it doesn't really matter to be absolutely honest with you. But what I also want to do, I want to have that flush with the base of our jig. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to trace this more or less around. And I'm going to come with my router and just create that recess for the head to sit flush. Right, <laughs> absolutely perfect as is. However, with my saw, I want to score a line on this base and I'm just gonna run my pencil over that line so I can see exactly where I'm gonna be making the cuts if, for example, I'm gonna mark my piece of work. And as you can see, it sticks to our guide absolutely beautifully. So let me just make a scoring line, run my pencil over that line and I can see now exactly where the blade of my saw will go. We're gonna do the same thing for the uh, 45 degree angle now. Obviously you can do it like that, however for me what I'm gonna do, as I am right handed, I'm gonna flip this over just like so and I'm gonna do exactly the same thing I'm gonna score the line and as you can see it sticks beautifully no issues at all so now I've got both of the lines there I can see exactly where the cuts gonna go and to finish everything off I'm just gonna use some furniture wax just to add a bit of protection and this saw will slide a lot smoother. Right then, let's test the jig out. So, for example, if you've got a bigger board, like this one, okay, I've got this beam over here. What you can do, grab the jig, place it on our piece of timber in the place where you want to make the cut. You can hold it by hand if you want to, but you can use a clamp to hold it down for you. That's why we've got the lip over here. And now we can make a straight cut with our saw on this piece of timber. And now we can see how square it is to that face. And as you can see, dead on square. Perfect. However, this will be also perfect for those smaller pieces. So let's put the jig together. And in my case, I'm going to use my vise to hold this in place. 
And now having this piece marked up, I can marry it up to the line I've got there. So no messing around, straight away I know where I'm going. And we can start cutting. And there you go, perfect straight cut. And there you go guys, nice and simple jig to guide your saw. Obviously Japanese saw, absolutely perfect for this. However, it will help you out with a normal saw as well, just to guide the cut for you a little bit. Bit of a helpful hand. Now, I absolutely love my Japanese hand saw. It's fantastic and I use it more often than you may think. And if you don't have one, make sure to get one. I'm going to drop some links down below in the description of this video so you can go and have a look what other options there are. And they are really not too expensive to get and you'll see that you're going to be using them quite often. Not only for the smaller pieces, like a few weeks ago me and my dad were making those tiny little houses and this was absolutely fantastic to have great little helper to cut out those smaller items and I wish I had this jig then as it would be so so much easier and quicker. Now I hope something like this will find its place in your workshop as well and I do hope that this video was somewhat helpful to you. If it was, drop me that like button down below and please consider subscribing to my channel as well for some more cool content. However, my YouTube channel is full of videos around workshop projects, anything like that, jigs as well and I've got some really cool playlists for you just over here. So hopefully you can find in your next video on those playlists. I'll see you on my next video there. Take care.